Okay, Chuck Mafori, bias, Taunt Gilmanson. Uh, on my, my father's side, I have Chickasaw uh, First Nations heritage. On my mom's side, I'm Clan Teller from Scotland. But I first want to do, recognize that I'm on the traditional territory of the Lewagan speaking people, and the two First Nations that are in our area are the Esquimalt and the Songhees First Nations. So my, often my, the stuff that I work on is a mixed media. You have many types of, of pieces that I, that I do. A lot of my designs come from both my heritage, come from the Chickasaw side and also from the Scottish side. I work in uh, many materials, like I was saying. So I, I do uh, Elkai drums, I, I do Elkai rattles, I work in uh, ceramics, I also paint, I weave, I work with uh, copper forms and making sculptural, sculptural pieces as well. This is a kind of a, do a quick run through kind of what I'm, in the, at least in the ceramics part, is most of the brown pieces that I have are done in an Anagama kiln, which is uh, Gordon Hutchins' Anagama kiln on, on Denman Island. And so most of it's a Shino glaze. I sometimes do a soda ash overspray on those. Some of the other types of pieces I do are done in electric kiln. Uh, and there are again, a variety of, of glazes, but mostly a copper or a, or a, a cobalt base to sort of get some color. A few times I also, have, I've had access to gas kilns. So I have a lantern series and a copper red series on this side that shows uh, kind of the effect of, of gas. And I have a few pieces of result. So I play on def a bunch of different mediums as far as the clay goes. The designs that basically come from my territory uh, and also from my Scottish heritage, a lot of it was on, first on uh, what I call the munchies series, what's local and what's wild food. So like duck and, duck and swan or uh, crayfish or turtle or carp or catfish. So those are some of the designs that I use. There's also, my great grandmother was a midwife and a healer woman. So a lot of the, uh, of the plants that I have are based on healing. So there's the Shasta Daisy, there's Chickasaw Apple, Modified Grape, uh, ginseng and a po um, upon, which is a type of tea the chickens I used to make up, black, it's called black tea for ceremony. So those are kind of the influences that I have from what I, what I do when I carve. The piece is thrown, I decide, I decide on my design and then I carve out that design. The pieces in here are uh, basically there's a, a single oxide or a few that have layered oxides on them to create the relief design of the, of the image. So one of my favorites is the uh, moose. I just love, I love my, my dancing moose. And also the, with the, this is the dancing shaman. You can see the dancing shaman as well that I've done in the drum. There's the gar that I painted for another drum, but I also have a gar on the pottery. So I do a lot of repeat designs uh, for, the, for, my, for my work. So uh, one of the things uh, that groups I've been working with is, uh, there's a group at the, at the synagogue, and Rabbi Harry at the, at the synagogue Emmanuel has invited artists to come in and takes a theme around the Torah, and uh, we create art around that. Uh, he does a readings from different rabbinical things, we have discussions, and then we create an art show for the community. So it's not all, I, I'm a Quaker, um, which is totally different than the Jewish folk, but we, we kind of work together to uh, have other artists create themes and share out our thoughts. And it's been very heartening for my soul to be part of that group. One of the themes that they had was uh, interpretation of the Ten Commandments. So I did a, instead of rather than uh, thou shalt not, I did a thou shalt. So thou shalt love each other, thou shalt allow the, the, breath, of, the breath of God on you. Uh, thou shalt forgive and, uh, and, and love. So there's different essence around that, around the, the Ten Commandments that I, that I did here. Again, it's carved out and then uh, scraffitoed and or carved through and then with, with oxides. I, after doing this piece, I got quite involved with making plaques. So um, one of my latest ones is, uh, is this one. It's uh, sumac, it's sumac berry. The sumac is, uh, again, one of, the, one of my munchies. So it's uh, full of vitamin, vitamin C and using a resisting you know, a batik technique to get the uh, design on. 
So there's other, other ones that are you know, different shapes for plaques with a tree of life and medicine wheel. There's a sense of behind all, all of these that it's like, rather than having ceramics just be used as a bowl or a spoon or a plate or a bowl or a vase, you could have something that would be act as, a, act as an image on the wall as well, but somewhere between sculpture and practical. So this is my little painting studio. And I've got all my underglazes that I've worked with, or oxides. I've got oxides in the other area. But these are also my painting with acrylics. So I mean, I'm working on a piece like this. This is kind of a new format I'm using. Is that I've thrown the piece. I've not put any glaze on the carved section. And everything else has been glazed. So um, this is all relief carved out. And I'll be painting on these. So I'm doing a couple different styles of painting. So this is one where I'm doing... Uh, this is a chimera, a, a cougar, a wolf, and a bear. Uh, and there's, this is going to represent the medicine wheel with colors. And then I've got the spiral on the back to tell me about the stories. This is the representing of stories. So this is water and earth. One of the ones that I've just finished has, uh, is this. So it's a four-sided. It has the matriarch. It has the unseen and the seen. This is the things that act upon us. In our, in, our, in our lives. Raven telling the story of the sun and the moon. And this is family. So a family tree with a rainbow because we are all different kinds. So that's the type of thing I've been working on. The, the, those, this one and this, uh, are ba these are Ashino glazes done in, done in the wood fire kiln. And this one's been done in the electric kiln and with, over, with oversprays. The, the sense I have for the for the animals in, in my for my nation, they tell they tell stories. So, wolf is about having family and, and protection and being aware of spaces around you. Uh, cougar is, is more of a, more of a maternal figure, looking after a family again, but looking after the young ones. Uh, and the bear represents telling the story as well. So, for example, if whatever a bear eats uh, is edible by is, is edible by people. So if you're Going to a place and you see a bear eating berries and those berries are edible. If you go to a little pond area and the bear's not drinking, then that water is not good. If a bear starts to dig roots, you'll know that that root is edible. So the bears are, bears are teachers of our culture and what is safe, uh, safe to eat or be part of on the land. So the stories that we have are stories that, the, the spiral stories are the stories that our ancestors have passed down to us and that we need to share for the future. So. Many of my pots are, are, are talking about sharing those stories in some format other than a verbal one. One of the other areas that I work with is silver and copper um, and do jewelry and different kind of sculptural forms like salts or vases. And, but I also work with those and I use dichroic glass and I also make my own torchwork beads. So I really love the dichroic glass. I think part of my ancestry must be raven because I just like sparkling. The, so the, one of the things that I've been doing is trying to, how to kind of combine um, things into formats. I, I start with the glass and figure out like, what is it that I'm doing, and then the, the silver or the form of the jewel, because the jewelry comes afterwards. So this one is, uh, is with the silver three-piece bracelet and with a larger pendant piece. Um, there's also pieces that have uh, medicine wheels on them. These are brooches or feathers that I also make. Uh, these ones are, uh, for me, it's like there's a, a sense like with the opal, well this is an opal glass, an opal dichroic glass, but the sense of like there's a magic to the dichroic glass. It's like it, there's a depth to it that's, that can create illusion and I think that that illusion is also the creative part of what a medicine wheel is about as well. So what is the, what do we think of when we're do, dealing with color and depth and how does that bring out the inner person? It's, so I, I quite enjoy the, the working, working with the working with the with the acrylic glass. It's it's tricky in that I do a lot of cutting and I get a lot of little cuts on my fingers, but the re end result is quite wonderful. The torchwork beads um, are great fun to make. So the the glass beads themselves are uh, formed on formed on rods, and then again I combine the 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 glass with, with the silver. So playing, playing with the glass is it's just an absolute delight. So some of the pieces have, like I said, this one has um, the feathers on it. 
the design on that one is based on uh, uh, the G's Bend quilters. I also make quilts. So the G's Bend quilters were, uh, they were descendants of slaves in, uh, in Alabama. And the designs they use are all based on their African roots for their quilts. Uh, so they had one called uh, Nine Pigs in a Poke. And that was their design, so I made a nine, nine, nine pigs in a poke design in the glass, thinking that we have to go back to our roots of who we are, and that the, uh, the feathers represent our ancestors and bringing back those, that safety, that sense of, of who we are as culture. Okay, I want to thank the Clay and Glass Museum for offering me the uh, possibility for doing this little video for the uh, Aboriginal Day activities. Um, it's important to my heart since a lot of the Aboriginal activities that are happening in my area in Victoria, BC, have all been cancelled. So a lot of the things are online as well. So much appreciated. Wado, wado. Um, and thank you again.